Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Lauren Wilkes, and I'm a graduate admissions counselor here with Shippensburg University. Welcome to our info session. And I will be joining Lauren today. My name is Jeremy Goshorn. I'm the assistant dean of the graduate school here at SHIP. I appreciate you taking time out of your afternoon slash lunch hour to join us. Uh, hopefully, we'll be able to provide you all the information you need in a relatively short period of time. Thank you. Today, we're going to be covering some general information about SHIP. We're going to touch briefly on our academic offerings, and then hopefully we'll cover in-depth information about admissions and financial aid. So let's get started. So we're going to start today with some brief information about how we began here at Shippensburg. We were founded in 1871 as a Cumberland Valley Normal School, which is a school for educators. And then in 59, we were approved for graduate work. And then in 83, we officially became Shippensburg University of Pennsylvania. Today, we look very different. So today, we have about 1,000 and plus graduate students. And our average class size is about 14. So it's a nice small class environment where you can become really close with your faculty members working one-on-one -on, -one on your projects. And about 78% of our students are part-time. So that bulk of part-time students are full-time working professionals coming back and taking classes. Um, it's nice because all of our classes are offered in the evenings, so they're really made to fit a working professional schedule. Most of our classes are after 4.30, and they run all the way through at 10 o'clock or so. So very convenient for a working professional schedule. Our faculty are very high quality qualified. We have about 365 faculty here on campus, and 90% of those faculty have terminal degrees in their field. So again, not only do you have that small class size getting one-on-one -on -one attention with your faculty, but you have extremely high qualified faculty that you're going to get the best quality education possible. And the last piece that really completes our SHIP community is our alumni. After you graduate here from SHIP, you have a community of over 65,000 SHIP alumni that can help you assist with your career search. Um, here on the screen, we have some very, very reputable SHIP alumni. Going from left to right, we have John Kuhn, who's a National Football League fullback for the Green Bay Packers. In the middle is Tommy Franks. And Tommy Franks is a US general that led the attack on the Taliban in Afghanistan. And he also led the 2003 invasion of Iraq and the overthrow of Saddam Hussein. And then on the further side is Rich Alloway, our Pennsylvania State Senator. So again, we might be a smaller graduate school, but very, very high qualified alumni that can assist you post-graduation. So we're going to move into now talking very briefly about academics. I'm going to take it, let Jeremy take it away. I'm going to talk briefly about the programs that we offer here at SHIP and what they will provide you. It will be in a brevity format, so if there's additional information you're looking for or additional information that you'd like, uh, please let us know later and we'd be happy to provide that. The Applied History program is the first one I'm going to talk about. It's a Master of Arts in Applied History. It's for those individuals who are looking for public history, museum curation, they want to go into the public history realm. What I typically say is um, it's those individuals who want to help bring the history down to the masses and make it interesting for the rest of us. We have a Master of Science in Biology. It focuses very much on environmental and ecobiology. It's a 31 credit program which uses and um, has a lot of field-based internship components within it for those individuals who are interested in that. We have Communication Studies, a Master of Science and Communication Studies with two emphasis, emphases, rather, one in digital media and one in strategic public relations. We have a computer science program, <clears throat> 30 credits, 10 courses. Um, one in the, the computer science program, rather, has concentrations in IT leadership, software engineering, and two new concentrations that will be coming here shortly, one in MIS, Management Information Systems, and one in Cybersecurity. We have a Master of Science in Geo and Environmental Studies. This program is for those individuals who want to look at and be aware of the geology, the geography pieces, the environment, and how all of those come together, coalesce to really be an entire look at the environment itself. We have a Master of Science in Organizational Development and Leadership with a number of different concentrations. That program is a very liberal arts look at a number of different perspectives. 
Um, you can do a concentration in business, higher ed administration, structure and policy. Uh, maybe you decide to do one in management information systems. There's various different concentrations you can choose from. We have a concentra we have a program rather, a Master of Science in Psychological Science. Um, that is very research heavy. There are three tracks you can go towards in that program. A research track which prepares you for the doctorate. Um, it is very research heavy and requires you to do a thesis. We also have a concentration in that program uh, that is applied. The applied concentration leads you uh, really towards the professional career path. You do a internship, uh, two internships as part of that. Um, it's very behaviorally focused. So for those of you who want to be more BCBA, board certified behavioral analyst, that would be a good route for you. And then there's a general reading track for those individuals who just want general overall psych degree. We also have a Master's of Public Administration, an MPA program based out of Harrisburg. Um, you can take that at the Dixon University Center in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Very much focused on the government, the state government, and the federal government, and how do we as public service managers uh, manage what we've been tasked to do, both from the legal standpoint, the policy standpoint, and various other places. Uh, one note to mention, the ODL program, the Organizational Development Leadership Program, also offers their courses out of Harrisburg. We have, <clears throat> out of the College of Business, the MBA program, the Masters in Business Administration. Uh, we have been ranked top 100 in the United States for our online MBA program, and we've been ranked rather high by um, U.S. News and World Report and the Princeton Review for our remainder of our programs, top 100 there too within the United States. We're AACSB accredited. That is the gold standard in business accreditation. It means that the quality of our faculty are um, such that they've all been professionals in the field, are well versed at what they do and what they've been doing, and are able to provide you with the quality of education you're looking for. We've got a number of uh, professionals out there as well and a wonderful network of individuals you can work with. The MBA is offered at various locations. Uh, the professional programs offered at Shippensburg at our main campus, at Dixon University Center in Harrisburg, at the York Learning Center in York, Pennsylvania, and at East Stroudsburg University up at um, East, in East Stroudsburg, Pennsylvania. You can also take the program 100% online. The program has a number of different concentrations within it. Uh, concentrations in supply chain management, MIS, management information systems, a general program. Uh, we will be adding two new concentrations, one in finance um, and one in human resources here in the next couple uh, months. Um, that at the moment isn't available to apply for, but you will see information later about that. The College of Education and Human Services has some wonderful programs there as well. The Master of Science Administration of Justice for those individuals who want to administer the justice system. We have a counseling and college student personnel department. This is the area where those individuals who are thinking clinical mental health, school counseling, college counseling, or be a, being a student affairs professional would go. Uh, we have a Master of Education in Curriculum Instruction for those educators who don't think they want to be administrators at the moment and would like to continue to uh, deepen their educational knowledge within the classroom itself, they would go towards a Master's of Education and Curriculum Instruction with a number of different certification areas that you can choose from, both at the elementary, the middle, and the secondary level, a Master of Education in Reading, um, a Master's of Education in School Administration for those individuals who want that administrative side. We've got an MSW program, a CSWE accredited MSW program that offers both a regular track and an advanced standing component for those individuals who are coming with a BSW or may not have one, um, leading you towards, um, again, the MSW and the eventual licensure if you should so choose. Uh, one note to make, going back to the counseling program, you can there as well go towards your licensure and be a licensed professional counselor or here in the state. Uh, special education, a Master's of Education in Special Education for those individuals hoping to work with that population. Uh, we have four different tracks 
available to you that specialize in different areas of students and provide you with different uh, different training depending upon the population you want to work with. Lastly, we have a Master of Arts in Teaching Science Education for those individuals who are looking for a teaching degree but do not currently have one. They may have a degree in bio or chemistry or physics and they're looking to become a teacher. This is a wonderful route that gets you in and out relatively quickly, 18 months. Um, a majority of the program is online um, and allows you to become a teacher here in the state of PA. We also have a new EDD, a doctoral program in educational leadership. This is geared specifically towards those individuals who are currently in a administrative position within a school building and are looking to advance their career with a doctoral program. The courses are offered on weekends, typically Saturdays, um, out of the Dixon University Center in Harrisburg. There will be five to twelve Saturday sessions a semester depending upon course, course load, and the semester itself. It's a 62 credit program with a large number of residencies, residencies being you completing a large majority of your coursework in your home district. From there, uh, just talk a little bit about some of our certificate programs. If you're not thinking of going towards an actual degree at the moment, we do have some post-bachelor's and post-master's degree options for you. They're listed here. I'm not going to go into them in detail. Um, also, uh, postgraduate and post-master's, couples and family therapy, principal certification, superintendent letter of eligibility, which is, again, in a residency format where you, uh, you complete that in your home district, participating with mentored professionals that we set you up with. And then lastly, supervisory certificates for those in the educational realm. That was a quick overview of all of the different off, uh, campus uh, programs that we offer at the graduate level. If you do have additional questions or need additional information, please let us know either in the chat box down below or we have our contact later um, in the PowerPoint here and we'd be happy to give that to you, the additional information or questions that you have. At this point, I'm going to turn it back over to Lauren so she can talk about the campus services. Thank you, Jeremy. Okay, everyone, so as a graduate student here on campus, just as it was at the undergrad level, there are lots of services that will assist you both in your academics and in your social and professional lives. One that I would really like to point out for graduate students is our Writing Center. So the Writing Center is available on campus and online. And for those of you that are coming back, if you've had a few years between your undergrad degree and your graduate degree, the Writing Center is super helpful because they'll review your papers for you. They'll check for grammatical errors, big structural errors. They will talk with you in person about it. But if you would like, especially if you're attending classes at the Dixon Center or another off-campus location, They'll Skype with you and discuss the changes. They'll also email it to you with marks back. So again, very convenient way to get your papers edited. Um, something else I'd like to point out is our counseling center on campus. Our counseling center services are included in your tuition package. We know graduate school is stressful. Sometimes you need to chat with someone. Um, they're available and they're included in your tuition. So that's very convenient as well. One other thing that's really, really, really nice for it's those of you that are thinking about attending classes at the Dixon Center, um, one of our colleagues there is kind enough to run books up to you. So if you are taking classes there, you never have to come to Ship's Campus if you do not want to. Um, our colleague will get anything that you need here at the library and run it up to you. Um, and on campus, the library is also a huge resource for graduate students. There happens to be a little Starbucks inside of the library, so very convenient for evening classes. One last thing that I'd like to point out is our Graduate Student Association Board. Those of you that are coming directly from undergrad to grad and you're interested in getting more involved on campus, that's our governing body for graduate students that you can get involved in and have a little bit more say in the decision-making processes that go along on campus here for graduate students. So it's just another way for you to get involved. Now let's talk briefly about living in Shippensburg. Um, some of you may be considering moving and living in Shippensburg. There are many people that decide to commute to Shippensburg from a local area. 
regardless, if you decide that you'd like to live on campus, um, we offer on-campus housing for graduate students. We have brand new suites on campus that are available to graduate students. If you decide to live in the campus community but not directly on campus, at ship.edu slash housing, there's also a listing of local realtors, which is very, very helpful. And living in Shippensburg in general or commuting to Shippensburg, there's about two dozen restaurants here in town. And very conveniently, we offer a bus service that runs every Saturday to Harrisburg, which then offers mass transit out to other locations. So a nice um, regionally located town for studying. Now let's move into tuition, financial assistance, and admissions pieces. So this is all really important info for you. On the screen in front of you, you're seeing our tuition and fees for 2014 to 15. As you can see, total per credit is $587 per credit. Because we are a state school, we can offer very competitive tuition pricing, um, very low cost to attend SHIP, a very high quality education, so it's a win-win. For nine credits, that's considered full time for the graduate side. It's equivalent to a 15 credit undergraduate course load. So you're looking at a little over $5,000 for a full time semester here at Shippensburg. You can go part time taking two classes or one class at a time. One caveat that I would like to point out is if you take two classes, or excuse me, if you take one class at a time, you do not qualify for federal financial assistance. If you're getting reimbursed from your employer, if you're paying out of pocket, of course, that's not relevant to you. But if you're planning on filling out your FAFSA and taking out loans from the government, you will have to take at least two classes to qualify for those. And then the next page, again, talks a little more in depth about financial assistance. For those of you that are considering attending school full time, which is nine credits, we do offer graduate assistantships. Those are jobs on our campus. Um, and again, just for full time students, you complete the job during the day. The classes are in the evenings. That assistantship would waive your entire tuition. You could still have fees, books, and housing to pay for. But it also offer you a small stipend. Currently, it's $10 an hour. You're going to work about 250 hours per semester, which is equivalent to about 15 to 17 hours per week. So a really, really nice way to get your tuition paid for. But in addition, the time that you'll spend working on campus is an amazing experience to add to your resume as well. We also offer student payroll positions. Those are similar to assistantships. They're jobs on campus. You worked about 250 hours per semester. Um, there's not a tuition waiver. There's just a minimum wage payment. Um, that being said, though, it's nice working on campus in a payroll position um, because your supervisors understand that you're a student and they'll work with your schedule. So, and we talked briefly already about the federal direct loans, the ones from the government. You'll visit studentloans.gov to fill out your FAFSA. Um, again, you need to take that minimum of six credits. Something really nice, when you take out graduate loans, your undergrad loans will go on hold, even if it's after your six-month grace period. So um, those are not things that you have to pay on while you're in graduate school. And one big difference between undergrad and graduate loans is that they are unsubsidized. So that means interest is going to start accruing when you take those out. The undergrad loans, the interest didn't start accruing until after you graduated. So just a difference to point out there. Now let's talk about how to get here, how to join us in Shippensburg. Um, the first thing, of course, you'd want to do is research your graduate program, which you already have a head start on today, which is great. Um, something you want to check specifically for, though, is program deadlines and start dates. We are rolling admissions here at Shippensburg, so there's no technical deadline for our programs. With that being said, there are several programs that start only in the fall or only in the summer. Um, there are certain programs that have, like counseling, that have interviews. Those interview dates, when those are full, unfortunately, the program can't bring in any more students to consider. So again, just important to check out those program deadlines and start dates. Once you decide on a program and you know when it starts, um, you'll want to apply online. So the application is on all of our pages at ship.edu slash graduate. There's a big blue button that says apply now. The application itself only takes about 10 minutes to complete. Very simple and straightforward. At the end, you'll pay a $45 non-refundable app fee. Um, there is no place on our application to upload documentation. So when you are ready to apply, you don't have to have any of your supplemental materials ready. You can complete that application as your first step and be done with that piece. Next thing to consider is submitting all of your official transcripts. We do need transcripts from each and every institution that you have attended. Uh, we want those transcripts set officially. So directly from the institution, you can e email them to us, or you can paper mail them, whatever uh, you're most comfortable with. Whenever you 
get your transcripts and you look at your final GPA, we're going to look to see that you are above a 2.75 out of 4.0 GPA. With that being said, if you have below that, that's okay, but you will need to think about and research taking an exam. So we have two exams that we consider here. Um, for the MBA, that is one exception. You will need to check into the GMAT. So it's G-M-A-T. It's a business-specific exam. The other two exams are the MAT and the GRE. The GRE is from the same company as the SATs, very, very similar format. Um, and we're going to look to see that you're in the 50 percentile or above. The MAT is the Miller's Analogies Test. And it's quite literally a test of analogies. And it's a great way to test your critical thinking skills. So again, those are two things that you'll need to consider and sign up for if you have below the 2.75. If you have above the 2.75, you will not need to take an exam. The next piece is to submit your supplemental materials, which we'll go over a little more in depth in the next slide. Um, you can submit all of your materials to gradadmiss at ship.edu. Again, gradadmiss at ship.edu, and you'll see it on your screen there. Um, that email goes directly to our processing department. We'll receive all of those paper documents and scan them into our system that way. Then your final step is to wait, and sometimes that's the most difficult. But you can track your application status online. So when you log in to the same place that you applied online with the same username and password, you'll be able to see what you're missing when your application is complete and ready for review and when you've been accepted or denied. So that's the fastest way to find out. And backing up a little bit, supplemental materials are different for each and every one of your programs. So again, it's just important that you research your program online and check to see what the specific admissions requirements are. Make sure that your full name and date of birth are on all the documents that you send. And they vary very widely depending on program, but they can range from things like test scores to resumes to goal statements to interviews to autobiographical statements. It completely depends on the program. So make sure you're researching that. Now, so we talked briefly about our application review here at Shippensburg. We will gather everything, all of your documents here in the admissions office. And then the academic department that you are applying to reviews your, reviews your application. So they're going to check all of your supplemental documents. They're going to take a look at your resume and all of your transcripts. They will make an official accept or deny, send it back to our department, and then we upload that online for you. So again, the fastest way to check your status online. We're also going to send you a letter in the mail, an email. We'll try to give you a call as well. But again, that fastest way is checking online. You'll get a letter in the mail with your admissions packet when you're admitted. You'll get an admit guide. You'll have to go in and confirm that you're officially coming to Shippensburg to set up your email account, and then you can schedule classes. So just keep in mind that once you've been accepted, there are some additional steps after you have been accepted to come here to Shippensburg. So this is wrapping it up for us. Um, now we have a chance to provide you with our contact information. Um, Jeremy's information is on the top there. His email is listed. There is my name and my information. And then Ms. Jen Cadell is our, in our processing department. And the grad admits at ship.edu email goes directly to her. So anything you have questions about regarding your application or why aren't my things scanned in yet or did you receive that, she's the correct person to go to for that. In our chat box on the lower left-hand side, I'm also going to post two, um, two URLs for you to take a look at. One is for my personal chat. So after this session, if you have additional questions, you can chat me at that URL. And then this next URL is for Jeremy. So if you'd like to chat with him individually, this is his URL. And now we're going to kind of open it up for questions for you all. Uh, what questions do you have? Feel free to chat them in the chat box. We'll wait a few moments here to see if you all have specific questions. If you don't feel comfortable chatting with the group, again, you can always feel free after this session to chat with us on Pure Chat on our URLs listed there. So I'll open it up for questions. Don't be afraid. We're very nice, I promise. <laughs> so Christine is asking that one thing you stated is that you can submit the supplemental materials via email. Can this be done with official transcripts? That's a great question. Um, transcripts, it depends on the school that you attended. Some institutions will allow you to send them electronically, and you can use that email address if you can. Some schools just simply do not do electronics 
transfers of transcripts, so you just have to mail them in um, through snail mail. So it's just completely dependent upon your undergrad institution. Uh, one thing to also put in there, Christine, you can set it to the same email address that we listed before, grad admiss, G -R -A -D -A -D -M -I -S -S, at ship.edu. If the institution does electronic transcripts, you can just send it to that same email address. The snail mail address that you're asking about, the one that's listed right there right now, the 1871 Old Main Drive, Shippensburg, PA, is the best way to send anything via snail mail. Just make sure it says Office of Graduate Admissions somewhere on there, and you'll be good to go. There's only three of us, so it'll get to where it's going, I promise. Gregson posted, could I have transcripts sealed and sent to me, then forwarded the sealed transcript to your college? Jeremy, I'm going to let you weigh in on that one. The answer is yes. As long as they are sealed and they are official, you can send them to us. Um, I would encourage you, though, if they are older transcripts and you've taken additional courses that aren't on there, or if for some reason they could have been updated, to send us the most up-to-date version. If the version you have is the up-to-date version, then by all means you can send them to us. If you're an international student and are asking about international transcripts, then that's another question with another answer, um, and we can talk a little bit more in depth about those. So for international students, there's a question here from Uma um, about transcripts from a foreign university. If you do have transcripts from a foreign university, yes, you will need to have those evaluated by a professional credential evaluation agency such as WES, World Education Services, which is www.wes.org, or Education Credential Evaluators, which is ece.org. You can use any NACES approved organization. Um, I'll put the link to NACES in the chat box here, naces.org. You can use them to look for any credential evaluation agency you so choose. Um, we ask for the evaluation for two purposes. This ensures that we have the most accurate understanding of your transcripts, that we have the most accurate understanding of the courses you've taken, and we also, um, it allows us to make sure the GPA that we have for you is reflective of an American GPA, a U.S. model standard. Um, in some cases, this helps your GPA look better. In other cases, it may not, but um, it, it makes sure that there's a direct equivalency. One other piece to keep in mind, you must have a course-by-course -course evaluation of your transcripts. Um, so when you're out there looking for these different agencies, make sure you're looking for a course-by-course -course evaluation. In the chat box, I'm also going to put a link to the International Graduate Admissions Procedures page on our website. Please make sure you take a look at that. There's a lot more information there for you. And if this would be helpful for you all as well, um, I will email you all with the recording of today's session. And I could include in that a checklist for international students. I think that might be helpful for you all. Other questions for today? It looks like we have about two more minutes. So there's a question about deadline to submit applications for the summer term. Please keep in mind that we do not accept international students for the summer term um, unless you're applying for the MSW, the Masters in Social Work program. The only program that allows for summer enrollments from international students is the MSW program. Uh, for the remainder um, of programs, you need to apply for a fall entrance. The fall entrance suggested deadline for international students is the end of April, so you should have all of your documents in by the end of April.
Barry, if you'd like, uh, we can chat about the. Um, it looks like you just emailed me, uh, or rather chatted with me here about the F1 and your visa from Haiti. So we can chat about that um, a little bit more in the, the pure chat, um, and hopefully I'll be able to answer your questions there. Okay, everyone, it looks like we're about out of time today. But again, if you scroll back up to that chat box, you'll find both of our pure chat, which is our chat screens that you're able to chat with us individually anytime you'd like between the hours of 8 and 4.30. Um, let me flip back here for you. This is, again, our emails. If those are emails that you'd like to record to email us directly, you are more than welcome for that as well. Looks like Barry has one more question. You're welcome to ask Barry. Everyone else, if you need to head out, Thank you so much for coming, and we appreciate having you. Um, again, I will send you a recording of this session as well as in more information for international students. So if anyone has to go, thank you for coming, and we're going to wait here for Barry's question. Barry, we will waive the GMAT if you are a member of Beta Gamma Sigma. You'll just need to provide proof um, of being in Beta Gamma Sigma, so a formal certificate or just further information of proof of being a member. Um, as an international, you said your GPA is 3.5. If that GPA is 3.5 out of 4.0, your GPA is above a 2.75. So again, you won't need to take the GRE either. Did that help? Did that answer your question? Perfect. Okay, we're going to head out. Thank you all for attending. Take care and have a great day.